everybody. Welcome to Open Studio Hours at Jerry's Studios. My name is Amy Klein and I'm the resident artist here as well as the host of Jerry's Live. Uh, today I'm going to be working on kind of playing catch up with a couple of things. Now that uh, Jerry's Live is taking the you know break for the month of December and then we'll come back in January but uh, I'm trying to play catch up on all the artwork that I started but never finished. So uh, one thing that I did actually start was uh, this little sketch. It was part of the Jerry's Live show where I was doing transferring. So I was showing you how to transfer an image from one surface to another, which was a really good show, but um, I never actually painted it. So I have it on my panel here, and I have all of the 18 brand new acrylic colors in the Soho uh, acrylic line. Uh, so I have all the 18 new colors. And I just wanted to kind of create a little bit of artwork using these uh, just to kind of finish this up. Um, but let me get my actual chat started here. And then if you guys have any questions, you can ask me literally anything. So I'm going to be working on this. You can ask me questions about acrylics, but you can also ask me questions about oils or watercolors or printmaking, whatever you guys have questions wise, uh, questions for gift guide shows, you know, things like that. You can anything. Uh, there we go. Let me make sure this is turned down so I don't get reverb. <laughs> and then I can get started. All right, I think we are good. Awesome. So, out of all of the 18 new colors, Katie, what color should I start off with? Um, I mean, it's a portrait. Well, you said so. you were going to do the... Flowers like fluorescent, it'd be fun yeah. to put a fluorescent block in and then paint over top of that. Really, that would be fun. But we have, so we have a lot of new fluorescent colors. Or we, green gold. Or green gold, that would be pretty too. She does have, and I am working from a photo reference, guys. This is the original photo, and I kind of cartoonized her face a little bit with my sketch. Um, and in case you can't see that very well, this is kind of where I originally. Um, had sketched it with the pen, uh, but I am gonna kind of go off of her natural skin tone colors. There's an odd glare in the photo right there, but um, so I I don't necessarily need to start off with anything that's specifically in her face, but a fluorescent color would be fun. Um, let me actually make sure I'm also yeah. Here we go. Live chat, not the uh, what is it called top. Top chat. Oh, hey, there we go. All right, I'm seeing I'm seeing comments now because I had it hidden apparently. Whoops. So we do have new fluorescent colors. We have fluorescent yellow, orange, red, pink, blue, and green. Kind of pull those forward. Um, or Katie was suggesting also a green gold. So that would be really fun. Or what? What do you think? What do you think, Katie? This is why I make you choose for me, because I am oh, so no. indecisive. No, no. <laughs> Depends on what direction you want to go. That's true. There's a lot of pinks in the background, and I don't think I want to do the background in pink, but there's also a lot of like really nice warm colors in her cheeks, so I think that green gold would be really fun. And that fluorescence should still lay on top of it really nicely. So I think I'm gonna, I am going to start off with green gold. It's just so pretty. Alright, and it's not even open. So it's the cool thing with these tubes. When you first get them, you have to uh, unscrew the, the cap and then pop this seal off so it's nice and sealed, especially for uh, when they're being shipped out. All right, so let me put on a nice blob of the green gold and then I'm gonna also be using the uh, golden satin glazing liquid just because I want to thin down my acrylics but I don't want to destroy that bond by using water. That's a, a trick that a lot of people do is that they thin down their acrylics with water. When you do that you do kind of run the risk of um, de-charming. Hi! Yeah you do run the risk of uh, breaking that acrylic bond and kind of giving your, yourself a very not great primed surface to work off of. So I'm going to be using glazing liquid instead of water to thin mine down. Also, I love the satin uh, like finish when it comes to that. 
Why am I not wearing some Christmas decorations? Ah, uh, that would probably be very difficult. Oh, you, are you talking about her or me? I guess. Am I am I supposed you to be wearing Christmas? Work. I need some Christmas every baubles. <laughs> every day for the whole month of October. I did wear a, a costume every every week for October because let's be honest, when else am I allowed to wear costumes? Except for maybe right now. Right, right. Yeah, if she's supposed to be wearing Christmas decorations, that is where I kind of understand. But, um, ooh, look at that color. It wasn't really like a very holiday themed painting. It was, when did I do this? Was that in October? I don't remember. It's been a, a bit. 222 shows. Yeah, it's hard to remember <laughs> when they, where they lie. But um, I am just gonna kind of knock down that white and give myself a little bit of a toned surface here. And I am painting, in case you guys are wondering, on the Universal Primed Centurion LX. It is linen, but it is primed uh, universally, so it can accept oils, but also acrylics. So you guys remember, if you do have any questions about anything, feel free to pop those in. <laughs> it is kind of getting a little bit of more of like um, Grinch vibes now with that green gold. I can turn her into the Grinch. That would be funny. I don't think. It wouldn't. Prob it probably like wouldn't. I do. I don't think it would look very grinchy though. Mm -hmm. Unless I gave her like fuzzy wisps. You know? Oop, that's a little bit more glazing liquid. That and I'd have to give her a who snout. I might get this table even more messy, which is okay. Right. Make sure I you guys can see that. I'd like my first layer to be real thin because I'm just trying to knock that white down. These paints have enough pigment in them to really mix quite a lot of um, medium in there and still get a beautiful color. knocked it back down to a lovely green. Um, hello! Green gold is such a nice color. Yeah, we were just having um, Andrew Cook on the show yesterday. Yesterday? Wow, no, it's Thursday. I'm losing track of my days. Tuesday, we had Andrew Cook on the show, and um, he was going over all the different uh, green colors that they had in the Sennelier oil line and green gold was one of them and I just no matter what brand of paint it is that green gold is just so pretty all right so let's start mixing some skin tones so we have raw sienna which 
is probably brand new and not even opened. Yep. All right. What medium are you using? The medium, it's the satin glazing liquid with the golden, golden brand. Also, can we talk about how awesome these little flip caps are? <laughs> oh, they make it so easy. I love me a good squeezy bottle, but when they really like click in, uh, open and shut like that, it's just, it's so satisfying and you really know it's like really sealed. Cause I'm one of those people that like, I will literally do that and not worry about it. But <laughs> if I don't actually shut it, it's uh, a little dangerous. Tuesday, Thursday, they both, they do both start with T's. I was almost there, right? Jamie knows. <laughs> All right, so this is another one of the new colors. This is the Cadmium Deep Red Hue. So when it says that hue in parentheses next to it, it is not an actual true cadmium. It is a synthetic version and tends to be, um, the non-toxic, so it does have that AP certification, so it is non-toxic, which is good. And I have Quinacridone Magenta, which again is not open. I probably should have opened these before we started. Sorry guys. So I want a couple of different reds and pinks to kind of pop into her cheeks to give her that nice warmth that will make her look alive and less like a zombie with the green. <laughs> now, this is one of those colors that I'm also very excited for. It's the unbleached titanium. I love, I love that color. I love titanium white to tint my, my colors and everything, but sometimes it can get really chalky. Uh, this being more of that like yellowy beige, especially when doing portraiture is such a really, lovely color to tone, or I'm sorry, tint your um, your colors with. So that's, if I have an unbleached titanium available, I always reach for that instead of a titanium white. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of that glazing liquid up there in the corner. And let's grab, I'm gonna grab this rake brush and I am going to pop in a couple other colors that are existing in the Soho line and also use. <laughs> so this is Burnt Umber. It's going to give me that, oh, and I got a little bit on my hand. Uh, that's going to give me that nice um, warm chocolatey brown color that I can see in her skin tones, which are lovely. But I also do want, ooh, actually, if I take a little bit of that magenta. Oh, ho, ho, that's a pretty color right there. Did anybody else do that? <laughs> when you're mixing colors, you just go, ooh. Yes. <laughs> All the time. Let's all be more fairy. Yes. All right. So I am going to destroy this picture here. So I think I'm going to graphically put in her hair because it is a little bit more cartoony, but I do want to have this as reference. I think up, having it be up there is a little too far away for my brain to connect A to B. So please do remember that, uh, this is the part of the painting that's gonna look, we always say there's an ugly stage in a painting. <laughs> this is gonna be my very funky, ugly stage. You gotta paint through the ugly, right Katie? Always gets ugly before it gets better. That's right. Good in painting and in life. Mm -hmm. Block her ear in. Except for that little spot where it gets real dark. Right, if I squint, shadow of her face kind of comes out and down like that.
Yeah. You what? I mean, I just take, that's what we're here for, and every time I do that, I feel like I quote Ursula from Little Mermaid. <laughs> that's what we live for. <laughs> All right, so Katie's giving me Ursula vibes. <laughs> I'm gonna start singing Little Mermaid songs. Uh, I would more often than not say absolutely do that, but we might get demonetized and kicked right? off, so <laughs> maybe no. Oh, and uh, okay. in case anybody's wondering what I put on my palette, this is the, I gotta hear, hear Katie's voice in my head, Dioxazine do it. Violet Hue. <laughs> If anybody watches the show, they know I have a really hard time saying that word for some reason. So I have to hear Katie's voice in my head going, Dioxazine! Dioxazine! That. <laughs> I love pigment names. They are. Like, thalocyanine. Like thalocyanine. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun word to say. Quinacridone. I love quinacridone. Yeah. So if anybody... Words. It, they, they really are. Cinnabur. Cinnabur. It's fun. Uh, if anybody's wondering the phthalo cyanide that we're talking about, that's actually anytime you hear you see like phthalo blue or phthalo green, uh, those are the phthalo cyanide colors, and they shortened it to phthalo, so everyone doesn't it's think that they're well. Th it's harder to say, and people were getting a little weird about the cyanide. The cyanide. C cyanide. Is it cyanide mm -hmm. or cyanide? Phthalo cyanide. Cyanide. Let me just, you know what, I have a, my brush is too big. I keep doing that. <sighs> I need a smaller brush. <laughs> Di Dioxazine, yes. There's another one that I like, I can't remember it. I'm find it. Oop, I think I got a little piece of color in there. All right. So I'm not being very like, perfect with this because I know I'm just going to be painting on top of other things, but I just want to block in most of those darks. Because this is acrylics and it dries so fast, I can layer on top of it really, really well. And I'm also probably going to completely block in her eye. Um, the pupil is the dark center, the iris is the color part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Iris. I'm gonna block in her whole iris, and I can always get the the pupil darker, but then I can go back and layer the little bit of like lighter color where the light is reflecting in her eye right there. I can kind of come in and pop that in, and it will give you enough of an impression of her eye color that you don't have to sit there and painstakingly render it. Yes, there is no cyanide in phthalo colors, in case anybody's wondering. All right. Again, painting a very small area with a brush that's too big, but that's okay. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to noodle just yet. She has a lot of blues in her hair right here too, that are really pretty. All right, it's real dark under her chin. I somehow always lean into paint for some reason. Have you already done that? Yep. It's the green. I got green gold on my arm. It's fine. So they're non-toxic. Let me just double check. Yeah, non-toxic, so I'm okay. <laughs> Normally I'd immediately go wash my hands, but, or my arm, but I'm okay. shadow under her chin right there. Let's see kind of what's going on with that 
shoulder. Oh, that'll be in shadow. Elevator music. Yes, it is elevator music. Lo-fi. It is lo-fi girl. In case anybody is wondering. It's in the description. Yeah, it's in the description. As Katie said. <laughs> I remember correctly, uh, you prefer Metallica when painting, mm -hmm. right? Which, again, I would do that, but I don't think Katie would appreciate it. Although, you have a very eclectic music choice. Depends on the song. It does. Alright. Let me toss in a little bit of that raw sienna. Lighten it up a little bit without getting chalky. Again, I'm not trying to lighten my colors by using white. I'm using a, a lighter uh, color that has an opacity to it. Um, and that's how I tend to lighten my colors instead of getting that chalky whiteness to them. Which is, again, why I like to choose that um, unbleached titanium instead of a titanium white. I'm so excited that we have that now. <laughs> I have an odd memory uh, that I can remember that you like to paint to Metallica, but I can't remember what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Tuesday earlier. <laughs> that or I can remember all the like random tasks that I have to do, but I can't remember what I had for breakfast or that I ate breakfast. Because that's happened before. Let me get a little bit. I will probably be using more of that glazing liquid as soon as I have that base layer down for her face. That way um, I can do more of glazing on top to get subtle variations instead of quite a few of them. Wow, I just lost my train of thought as I was trying to talk. Arting and talking is hard. I forgot what month it is. All right, so I'm not alone. Appreciate that. <laughs> Warm that up with a little bit of that uh, quinacridone magenta. Although she has a little bit more orange in her cheeks there, so. All reds are not created equal. Some of them have more blue tones. Some of them have a little bit more oranginess to them. So that, um, the cadmium red deep that I had right here that has a lot more of that orangey color to it. So if I mix that with that raw sienna, I think that's gonna give me the color that I need. Yeah, that's pretty. If I touch that into her cheeks, her chin, her nose, her lips, that's where um, when you warm those areas of the face up, that's how you really get a nice liveliness to it uh, without making them look sunburnt. <laughs> Although I have gone too far with that one uh, one too many times and they've had a little bit of a sunburnt face. Which is okay because you can also glaze on top of it. Knock it down a little bit. Go back to this and I'm going to also add in a touch of that unbleached titanium to lighten it. So when I am mixing colors for skin tones, I mean, there is really no specific formula when it comes to mixing skin tones. 
Um, I'm just more of a reactionary painter, so I will start off with mixes that I'm very familiar with. Like, I know um, any of my brown kind of colors, so like raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, um, those nice, like, rich, chocolatey brown colors. When you mix those with reds or uh, even that dioxazine violet, um, you can get a, a good... Diox, diox violet, there we go. Um, you can get a lot of very lovely uh, skin tones for like the shadows I add the purples to. Um, I usually tend to add, for like the highlight areas, I add a little bit more of like the yellowy, orangey tones. Um, even in, you know, her face where she doesn't have a whole lot of like crazy yellowy orange colors, but like where the skin's ref being reflected with that light, if I can get it to not be glared. Uh, you can still see there's some yellow, more yellow in here than like on this side of her face. So this is where I'd keep the purples, and this is where I'd keep that like nice, more of a yellowy tone. And I'll lay something down like this, and I know that's not the right color, and I'll go back on top and kind of color correct it as I go, but I still continue to paint that color everywhere where I kind of see that value <laughs> in her face. And if I need to correct it later on, I can. Um, but it's, that's kind of how I do skin tone mixing. And what inspired me to paint this beautiful lady today? Um, I had said it earlier, uh, this is one of the images that I had done for the Jerry's live show. So I did this sketch and it was for the, and there's the actual, the photo that it's based off of is Jessica Felicio on unsplash.com. That's where I got that photo. Uh, I had drawn this um, kind of more of a cartoony kind of version of that photo and then um, we were doing transferring uh, from one surface to another and different ways of transferring depending on what you have in your studio and I just never finished painting it so I decided it was about time. So I, it's kind of like the month of catch up. I get to actually do all the, the stuff that I've been meaning to do but haven't quite gotten to throughout the year. I'm probably gonna be posting a lot of things to our Jerry's Live Facebook group too. <laughs> I have a lot of catch up to do. All right, so I think this is a little dark for that center area of her nose, but again, like I said, I will lighten it up if I need to further in but I just want to kind of get sort of that tone down first. Something that's a little bit more similar to the actual color that I'm seeing in her face. Then I need to make it a little bit more warm or cool. I can do that. It's a little bit darker, which is more that color, but I will do that in a minute. All right, now her, actually, I should clean off my brush because I'm getting a little bit of a buildup of acrylic on there. Is the model a young Zendaya? I don't know who the model is. That's kind of the beauty of... Yeah, Katie's saying no. Katie is kind of the authority on, like on those things. Um, but no, um, I don't know who this is. That's the beauty of the uh, royalty free, because uh, I got this from unsplash.com. That's the beauty of royalty free is that uh, they, uh, photographers upload their photos and then they um, allow you to use them. I mean, I, yeah. We like to, uh, we like to give, you know, what's the term? Call out who the artist is, the photographer? Credit where credit is due. Credit. That's what, the, that's the word I'm looking for right there. Katie knows me. Um, <laughs> we like to give credit to the photographer, uh, which is why I always try to mention it, um, and tell you guys where to find these royalty-free images, but I don't have any idea who this person is, um. I just know it was a photo that I saw and I was like, that's a lovely photo. And I decided that I wanted to paint it. 
And I, just like that, got distracted and forgot what part of the face I was painting and did something else. That's okay. I do this all of the time. Her complexion is flawless, isn't it? I absolutely love her skin tone. That's, I think, probably why uh, this drew me, this uh, photo was so inspiring for me. Plus that hair. Oh my gosh, I love her hair so much. I can't wait to paint that in. <laughs> Plus I popped in some really fun flowers around her so that I could end, uh, almost like a bust, uh, to where I could end it with having um, an actual ending to the, the painting without having it just trail off the canvas. So maybe I'll make this into a sticker one day. It'll be absolutely possible. I need a little bit more warmth to that. I think I put a little bit too much glazing liquid in there too. Need more pigment. There we go. And then this is the part that I was painting in. Because underneath her eye, right here, goes up to her iris. But it's in shadow. At least that area is a little bit. But not that much shadow. See, I'm a reactionary painter. I put it down, it's too dark. I, that's okay, I'm gonna go back and fix it. Oh yeah, Zendaya photos would have been copyrighted. Yeah, they would have. Especially with her new movie getting ready for that's right. And TV show. She's in a lot of stuff right now. She is. Which, let's be honest, um, and that's kind of part of, uh, for me specifically, because we are doing this for Jerry's, and that's, you know, this is what we're doing, and, and it's YouTube. for YouTube. Um, I wouldn't be able to use her photos. You guys can absolutely paint them as long as you don't sell them yeah or you don't make profit off of it that's right. the one thing uh is that you can't make stickers or anything like that when it, you're using a copyrighted image that's why i always suggest for everyone to use a royalty free image like from unsplash.com or pixabay is another one that i like to go to that way if you make the most amazing painting of your life you don't have any royalty issues um, and you can use that and then reproduce it in prints if you want to, or even, uh, like I was saying, if you want to make this into a sticker or sell the original painting, that kind of a thing. All right, I'm going to darken this up a bit. Her ear is almost completely in shadow. Just a little bit of it, right there. So even though this is a huge chunk of shadow, I am still trying to find those warmths and cools. Uh, so when her, like right here where her neck is turned and it has those creases, in the creases it's gonna be way more cool than the top of it. Even though it's in shadow, I'm still trying to get a little bit of warmth to those areas. Um, but I am keeping the value of it down pretty far. That's what I'm really trying to see. And I'm also so used to using, because I have my, uh, my tablet over here for the comments that you guys are sending through. And I'm so used to having <laughs> it on my tablet to like pinch, uh, zoom and, um, zoom in and zoom out. Like that's why I like, I'm trying to see more detail and like, I might reach over and just do this cause I'm like, zoom in. Do you ever do that? <laughs> it's a piece of paper. It can't zoom. That's okay. I have done that. That's Or great. try to zoom on something that wasn't touch screen. Yep, I have definitely tried to zoom in to something that was not touch screen. Alright, 
let me get the rest of her face before I keep going and noodling into this area. <laughs> Do I really only have 20 minutes? Yes. Holy monkey. I have to finish this on a yeah, I can always stop painting this completely right now because uh, we won't have another open studio next week. We'll have it the following. What is the following week? What's the date? Make sure that's on a holiday is my specifically while I'm asking <laughs> while we're here. But I can also save this for then. Even though I really want to finish it, I'll wait for you guys. There's one more on the 16th. Okay, it'll be the 16th. I could do that. And then we're skipping the week after that because it's... Yeah, if you guys want to... New Year's Eve. That's true. Um, if you guys want to have me finish this on the next open studio, put it in the comments. And I'll make sure to save this painting and stop working on it, even though that's so hard. I'll do it for you guys. the first week of Christmahana Kwanzaa. Yes. I love that term. Christmahana Kwanzaa. Christmahana Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. <laughs> that was on the... Great. Did you watch the OC, I think it was? No. They celebrated Christmahana Kwanzaa. Fun fact for anybody who does not know, I don't really watch TV. Like, I'm such a movie buff, which is, like, it's the weirdest thing. I will watch movies, but I don't watch, like, TV TV. It's, I have a hard time sitting down and just staring at a TV, unless it's like right after AOC and I'm tired. <laughs> there are certain times where it's okay and I will do it, but for the most part, no. We can't not have an unfinished painting. I know, but I can finish this on my own time, but no. I will save this for you guys. Um, and that way I can finish this the next open studio hours because we're not going to have Jerry's live. Um, hence why I'm ca playing catch up on all this. But um, I will stop once we finish this. I will stop, I'll clean up my stuff, and I will wait for you. Almost like we're watching a series, a TV series together. But it's just me painting, right? Eh? She looks like an alien with those green, green eyes. <laughs> what was, there was another painting I was doing where I started off with like a crazy yellow and until I blocked in the white of her eyes, um, she, <laughs> Star Trek 24 seven. I can't, I can't fault you for that. Star Trek is awesome. I just haven't watched it in a very long time. But yeah, so uh, when I blocked in her eyes finally, she she looked normal, but um, until I had done that, she looked like she was very ill. Which is why I always tell people, don't say anything about a painting until it's done. When, it, when, when it's not yours, specifically. Do you guys have that happen too? Like somebody like will walk into your studio when you're halfway through a painting and be like, oh, uh, what is going on? Mm -hmm. I have that happen so often. <laughs> I do that to myself sometimes. Yeah. You walk well, away from it and you come back and you're like, whoa. That's actually a good thing though. When you are in the middle of painting and you walk away from it, that's actually why I'm kind of excited about saving this for the next show is because when I come back to it, I'll have fresh eyes 
and I'll be able to be like, that's wrong, and then fix it. Um, but yeah, I definitely have done that so many times. around her little, there's the tip of her nose. You know that's gonna be a highlight and I'm gonna make it like real bright. For right now, I'm not going with a bright, pure white. Every check series except it's like Bob Wa Bob Ross only prettier. <laughs> Wait, are you saying she's prettier than Bob Ross? I mean, she does have the hair. I'm just saying. Oh, Jamie. I'm an art something. Art mess. I'll go with art mess. I'll admit that. Let's be honest. Although I am a fairly clean painter, that's. Katie always laughs at me when I do get a little messy every now and then, but yeah, for the most part, I'm a very clean painter. Although there was um, one artist that I was just floored by, um, Morgan Samuel Price. I don't know if you're familiar with her work, Katie. Mm -hmm. She's got the most amazing landscapes. She's a wonderful planner painter and a huge, like, Amazing human being, just in general. She is fantastic. And I had interviewed her, um, and I interviewed her in her house, in her studio. She had um, champagne colored carpet, and that's where she painted, in oils. Some people are just very... She was the cleanest painter I think I've ever met. Aw, thank you. Next generation for the win. <laughs> I don't think I have as great of a complexion as she does, but she's flawless, so. There might be a little airbrushing being done to this photo, but I'm, you know, not gonna be mad at it. She's got lovely, lovely skin. Although if you are a painter and you want a challenge, paint somebody that has not perfect skin and try to get that, that texture in there. That is a challenge. It's a fun challenge, but it is a challenge, nonetheless. All right, so even though I'm adding in more of a lighter values to her skin, I can tell like over here it needs to get way more yellow. I don't have the right kind of yellow on my palette here. Oh, actually I do have a yellow ochre, which might work. We're at 344, I have some time. I have some time. We're good. Just a little bit. I don't always paint. Just a little bit of that yellowy tone without it being... Cause normally I would have like a cadmium yellow or something on my palette. I did not grab that. I have a fluorescent yellow, but I don't think that would look very well, uh, good in her skin tone. I have not tried that though. Maybe I should. But um, it definitely needs a little bit more warmth over here. Because even though it's lighter in value, it's getting a little purple. <laughs> All right. Of that raw sienna and the yellow ochre for a nice like orangey yellow that's pretty pop it in up here because i definitely need to fix that transition between the light areas and the darker shadows have a little bit more transition colors but i'm not going to blend it i'm just chunking in where i see this color which is why i love a um a flat brush. This is the Bestie Super Shader. 
and I love the size that the eight it's got that nice I don't know if you guys can see that nice flat shape to it uh, also a filbert love me a good filbert brush Just yawn. No yawning. There's no yawning in baseball. <laughs> Those are contagious. I know. So I was like, I heard it and I like didn't look up because I knew I'd be yawning. Gets you every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That's looking a little bit better now that I got those yellows kind of popped in. It's also over here. She does have a bit of a shadow where that nostril is blocking the light, but the rest of it is still in light, but it's not like as bright as over here. So let me do. Ooh, that's too much red. Too much red. What was that? Uh, what was that? Burnt umber? Yeah, burnt umber. The cadmium red deep. I'm gonna mix it into that mixture that I already had over here, um, which was the one I've been kind of working up with. So as you guys can see, I start off with a same like a single mixture, and then I just kind of build off of it. So I have my warmth, my warmer tones. And here, actually, let me pull this over here my warmer tones and uh, the ones that are a little bit more yellow over here, then my purpler, uh, more shadow colors are over here, and then I kind of keep them separate that way. Um, but that way I kind of have, and I pop back and forth between them, especially when I'm working in acrylics, um, just to kind of keep them uh, fluid and still moving. But usually I kind of keep building off of that one color that I had initially mixed. I've heard someone refer to that as their, what was it, a mother mixture? And then they just kind of build off of that. Oh, thank you. Divers are where it's at. Love it. All right, Let's do a little bit more of that yellow ochre. All right, a little bit of that glazing liquid in there just to kind of re wet my acrylics a little bit because they're getting a little dry and I can feel it getting a little bit more tacky. So if I add more of that glazing liquid in there, it gets them nice and fluid again without, again, without um, kind of killing that adhesion bond that you want to have with your acrylics. Ooh, that was too dark. See, reactionary painter. Go back over that with a little bit brighter. And that's too light, so I'm just gonna mix them together. <laughs> there we go. Again, I'm using a brush that's too small. That's all right. I'm gonna get a little bit of that lighter color pop in the side of her nose. The mother color. Yeah, it's the overall color of the subject being painted. It does tend to be your first color, and then it expands off from there. You are absolutely correct. Am I gonna spritz the paint? Uh, that's, I kinda don't work with water spritzing my paint, just because if it dries, that's okay. I still, cause it's so fresh, I still know how I kinda got to that color. I can more or less make it again, uh, just because all the paint is still on my palette. Uh, but 
as you can see, all this paint, I've had it out for an hour and it's still wet. Uh, that's why I take little chunks off of it as I'm painting. Um, and then I have this uh, glazing medium that if my really small amount of mixture that I'm working with right here gets a little dry, I add a little bit more glazing liquid in there and it actually does reactivate it a little bit without getting it too thinned out. Uh, nor does it kill that bond, like I was saying, with the water. <clears throat> you can learn the painting skills, by the way. Car Carlene, Carlene, you can learn painting skills. It's just, it's a lot of practice. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. Now a Stay Wet palette is awesome, by the way, MJP. Um, those I, I absolutely do love, um, but I just tend to work this way without having a Stay Wet palette. Um, I don't know, it's just a habit, I guess. <laughs> Did I already explain the reason for the green background? Uh, cause we, we're just trying to pick a funky color. That's the reason. <laughs> Katie picked it. Um, I like to just it kind of, fluorescent pink. it was, it's either that or it was going to be this color, fluorescent pink. Um, although I was kind of leaning towards this quinacridone magenta, that would have been fun. You always do quinacridone magenta. I do, background. just because, especially in a portrait, um, those like lovely pink colors kind of shimmer through, but she has some wonderful green tones in her face. So I kind of wanted to have that as my base color. Um, just, I, I don't know. It's, I like to start off with a, a crazy color. I just want to knock down the white is essentially how I wanted to, to do that. I, and I could have started off with burnt sienna or fluorescent pink. <laughs> But Katie picked green gold and I agreed and I thought that was a lovely color choice. <laughs> oh yeah, the glazing liquid. The glazing liquid is awesome. But yeah, it's kind of stuck over here off to the side, but that's what I'm using. It does slow your drying time, which is why when I leaned into that green gold, I got it on my arm. Uh, but again, this is non-toxic, so I don't have to really worry about it. Otherwise I would have immediately gotten that off my arm. Um, but yeah, the glazing liquid does slow your drying time and it does get uh, a little bit more of a fluid viscosity, which is why when I started off my painting, I had the drawing done and then, cause you can still see that through, um, you can still see the drawing through there. And then I made it real thin, um, with that green gold, which is quite lovely. Stay oily palette. <laughs> Ah, uh, oils don't dry with the skin on them. I feel like there's a a way to do that, but it's not it's not quite like acrylics where you can put like a a drying retarder on top of your paints and work that way um, or mix it in kind of a thing. But you could put a layer, uh, I, and I haven't tried this, but I'm curious, Katie, you might correct me on this one, but if you are looking to keep your oils from getting that film on top. Don't put your paints in the freezer. Well, yeah, no, don't put it in the freezer because that's just not going to do anything. They dry through oxidation, so they contact with air. It has nothing to do with temperature, um, but if you are looking for like a Stay Wet palette for oils, there's not anything like that, but could you put a layer of linseed oil on top? That way I have it, seen people who do... So you can, yes, but it has to be individual wells and yeah. you kind of like drain it off like you do pizza that's too oily before. I can't vouch for how well it works. I have heard of people doing that before. Yeah, I was going to say, um, cause that's... I can't guarantee that the what they... it won't dilute your, your oils. paint over time because it's going to want to, the oil is going to want to seep into the paint and vice versa. So it's going to dilute your actual your paints, blobs yeah. of paint over time. Make them more transparent. Yeah. But... That's the I only thing, like if you do a light layer of it, of it though. A what? Saran wrap over top of them. Yeah. Because um, that keeps the, yeah. the air from Most people just getting to it too much. Skin. Yeah, that's what I do. Is that I, I let that skin form and then um, it kind of, actually I, I prefer the skin to form on my oils just because then it creates a barrier sort of to the rest of my paints and then I can kind of peel that up with a palette knife, get the paint and then put it right back down almost like a lid. 
Um, but yeah. it, your oils will dry eventually all the way through. <laughs> Just a lot slower than your acrylics. Yes. So I have, I did add a little bit of that um, cadmium red deep back into my color over here just to kind of get that more of a warm tone. Actually, ooh, let me try this magenta. Ooh, look at that lovely color. It's just subtly different, but nice and pink. <laughs> the rub on top of them. Um, that's, yeah, it is no different from having a skin on top of them. It, it essentially will do the same thing. Too much white. Or the, the unbleached titanium. Like the acrylic, you can just put water on the sponge and it helps them stay. Yeah. But Moist. there's not you couldn't put oil on a sponge and it like keep it. I know, because the there. oil still dries. Yeah. Which is I don't know. I mean how how long are you keeping the, yeah, the oils true, on your too. palette? <laughs> are you walking away for a week and then coming back? Cause Oh yeah, you don't want to waste your paint. I mean, that's valid. The way that I kind of get around with uh, not having wasted paint is by not, especially with oils. It's not putting out too much. I don't put out all my colors. Um, that like, specifically like I did today. I have 18 colors in front of me and I want to use every single one of them in this painting and I probably will at some point in time. But I only put out a select few just to get through this stage of my painting and then I might pop in more as I go. Like I put in the tiniest amount of that uh, yellow ochre. Um, and then I might add in more as I go along. But when it comes to oils, I try to keep the smallest amount of paint on my palette. I hate wasting paint too. It's precious materials, but still need to use them, so. <laughs> Get the little chunks, yeah. Uh, that's why if I do end up getting to a point where I know I'm going to stop a painting and I know I'm not going to get to use my paints, like all of this specifically, uh, and this is something you guys don't see while I'm on camera here, um, and actually let me put my paintbrush in there before it dries. Uh, the thing that I usually do is I take these and I will apply them to a canvas. Like if I have just a bunch of canvas kind of lying off to the side, I will actually tone them. Uh, with all this extra paint because I, clearly I start with any color <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to the base color that I actually start with I just want to you know take out that white that's on my canvas uh, The other thing I can do uh, especially with acrylics that are like this because uh, the Soho is Not a fluid acrylic and it's not a heavy body. It's kind of right in the middle. It's a soft body uh, so it will kind of retain those uh, textures and I can take these and add texture to my canvas if I want to do it that way. And if I don't love the color, that's okay. I've still utilized the material and put it on a piece of artwork, but I can coat it and cover it up if I want to change the color later on, if that makes any sense. <laughs> there has to be a way to leave oils, oil paint on a palette without the paint skinning over. I honestly, I would love to find a way to keep my oils from getting that skin on them. Uh, if I find out something, uh, I will share this with you. <laughs> uh, but I just, uh, off the top of my head, yeah, um, using what you got and then putting down more is the only way I can really think of. Oh, no, 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 you're fine. Don't be, don't be mad about getting away from the acrylics. This is what I'm here for. This is the whole point of Open Studio, is you guys can ask me questions about anything. Uh, I just happen to be painting in acrylics today, but um, there is no specific subject for the show. That's why we, we do this. Oh, it's four o'clock too. Woo. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and as MJP said, the only real solution to not get a skin on oil paints is to paint faster. <laughs> which is sometimes impossible. And I now gave her green lipstick. Fun fact. <laughs> All right, guys. The, the green eyes than the lipstick. I mean, it's not done yet. <laughs> she might have a, might need to see a doctor. She, yeah, she looks a little uh, sick right Jaundice. now. Yeah, it's a little yellowy, aren't, <laughs> isn't it? But listen, guys, it's officially time. I can't believe the whole hour just flew by. It's crazy how, how the time flies when you're painting. 
Uh, but as you guys have asked, I will leave this as is right now and I will stop painting. And then when we come back for open studio uh, in two weeks, which I believe we said was the 16th of December, uh, then I will continue painting this and we can hopefully knock this out um, at that time. But I will stop here so you guys can check it out the next time that we uh, have open studio. And uh, I will hopefully see you guys then. See ya. Although I need to go use this paint now.